While being a psychic medium has its perks and it can be great and fun at times, don't get me wrong, there's still some issues that one may face. And so today I decided I would make a video talking about my struggles because many people don't understand that, you know, it's not just about seeing dead people or feeling dead people. Like there are struggles that we deal with because of our abilities. <laughs> people too man okay no but seriously so I thought it would be you know shed some light on some things and so I have 11 personal struggles now if it's struggles that you also deal with if you have this ability let me know down below I'm curious and you know this isn't just for people with clairsentience this can happen to others and sometimes people have other abilities you have multiple there's that and if I missed one, please let me know as well, because I'm curious to see if it's something that I also face. So number one, feeling the thoughts, feelings, emotions, illnesses, whether it is physical or mental, cravings, speech patterns, habits, you name it. I can feel that of people that are dead or alive, and I can also feel that in animals. Now, it is a helpful skill, don't get me wrong. You can do a lot with it. However, the downside of it is, because you can feel all those things, it can kind of put you in a tizzy, and it can make you feel like crap, mentally and or physically. And so when I feel those things of other people, especially when they have illnesses in their body, I feel it too. Now, here's one experience that I had at work when I was working my retail job. I don't know if I've ever talked about this on my um, channel, but there was this poor lady who had cancer and she walked in and the second she walked into that lobby, oh boy, oh boy, I felt it. I've never felt such excruciating pain throughout my body all at once. And, oh my, I, my heart goes out to people that are dealing with that because it is not fun. Not going to cry. Not going to cry because I'm remembering how it felt and how that person felt. And yeah, okay. Whew. Sorry, guys. But it's that kind of stuff. I can feel everything. And when someone's having a bad time, I too will have that bad time because I can feel it. Yeah, animals... When my dog Ghost has stomach issues, my stomach issues pick back up too. Now I already have like genetic problems and chronic illnesses in many different places in my body. And when I feel it off of him, it just makes all that stuff worse. Same thing with the people around me. And it's nobody's fault. That's just how, that's just how shit works sometimes, you know? And it's always important that you learn how to work through that. And that is one of my... I would say life lessons of my current life. Number two, mystery illnesses and or chronic illnesses. This There's a bunch into this category here. So this can include, because you can feel everyone's illnesses, people that are inexperienced with this ability, and I'm gonna be real, this is an ability that I didn't know I had for the longest time. It was my first ability that popped out when I was a child and I could feel everybody's problems and it became my own and doctors wouldn't know what is going on and I would be throwing up, I'd be, you know, crying, all sorts of things. Now granted, you know, sometimes there's chronic illnesses that doctors can't find and that's what happened to me as well and it gets tricky, I'm not gonna lie. But 
there are many people that have had the experience where the doctors can't find anything that's wrong with them and then they're labeled as crazy or, oh, maybe it's because you're stressed out or maybe you just got to deal with your anxiety. Like, if you go see a therapist, it'll be fine and you just got to work through that, which is a great tool if that's true, right? It's a great tool. However, me in that position, I didn't need that. I just needed a doctor to figure out what my issues were, which at the time were endometriosis, which I had since I was a child, but because I was a female and I was a child, you know, it's rare in children and you're just trying to get attention and that's all I got. And it it sucks. And people with similar situations, I understand the position you're in because it sucks. Having to feel all that pain and then being told that you're crazy, dude, that's the most gaslighty thing ever. And then you start to feel like you're crazy because they don't find anything. And I can go on and on and on and on and it's not fun. But, so I'm just saying that I've experienced it with chronic illnesses that I physically have and illnesses that I've picked up with from other people that I don't technically have physically manifesting. And typically, I noticed a pattern. I would say Chas more so noticed this pattern and pointed it out to me. Um, she was like, hey, you ever notice that people with these abilities, and not just clairsentient ability, abilities, psychic abilities in general, have a lot of chronic illness problems? And I was like, holy macaroni, you're right. And uh, there's a reason behind that. And it has to do with... Those with psychic abilities absorb negative energy more so than those without. You know, if you want to learn more about that, go watch our Lights of Midnight podcast where we talk about all that stuff. Number three, we absorb the energy around us too quickly. And if you're somebody who A, doesn't know they're clairsentient or B, doesn't know how it works, you might not understand that the energy is being collected in your body and you have to ground yourself and or transmute it one way or another. And again, that's something I didn't know because probably about two and a half to three years ago, I didn't even realize I was clairsentient. I thought I was just clairvoyant because that was like the most, I don't know, observable thing. Whereas when you feel stuff, it's like when you have chronic illnesses, you just assume it's all you and not other people. Does that make sense? I hope it does. But so when you absorb negative energy into your body and it doesn't get released fast enough, not only can it create physical illness, but it can make the current ones you already had naturally worse. So with that being said, it makes it difficult for me to go to places with more than three people. And, for example, movie theaters, the second I walk into the parking lot and or the theater itself, bam, headache. I go out into the city, bam, headache and nausea. I go to a family function, bam, headache and nausea. And it's because of all the energy of all the people and it's nobody's fault. That's, again, how shit works sometimes. But it, it goes for things that are crowded Things that are old, or when I say things, I mean places. Things with a negative history, so battlegrounds. I wouldn't say cemeteries, but cemeteries are filled with, you know, the deceased. But anywhere negative energy can collect, I have a problem. Or like, for example, let's say there isn't a spirit lingering around and it's just someone died at a bar. Whatever, right? And if it's just a psychic imprint, I'll feel that too. I'll feel, ooh, they had a heart attack. That actually happened to me at the Brinton Lodge. I went there with my friend and we were doing our walkthrough and I'm like, I can't breathe. I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. And the tour guide's like, yeah, someone did die and have a heart attack in here. And I was like, oh, okay. Again, that was, that day was when I decided to test out to see if I was crazy or I had abilities. And well, ta-da! Number four, we have to put more effort in grounding ourselves 
and giving ourselves the rest that we need and anything else that we need to do, like cleansing our bodies or spaces to replenish all that energy that we, you know, use to help other people. And personally, that's why, like, if you try to book a session with me, I only have four slots open a day because I need that time and I need at least two or three hours in between each session to, like, you know, separate myself from that energy so I can go to the next person. Plus, I get drained too sometimes and get really tired, and when that happens, I feel like crappioli. It's also another reason why I had to take a chill pill on the live streams, because I used to do a lot of live streams where I would do the readings. I needed a break, not gonna lie, because everyone's thoughts and energy and everything is just pounding on you, and it's a lot sometimes, and because I was doing it too often, I didn't give myself a break, and it was making me sick. Another thing I noticed, and this could just be me, but food and other sensitivities, I feel like a lot of it too, I'm wondering if it has to do with like the pain and suffering of the animal, especially, okay, I'm allergic to, don't laugh at me, <laughs> meat, poultry, dairy, pretty much any animal except for fish. Like, if I eat it, I'm in big trouble. Um, and I'm wondering again if it has to do with like the suffering of those animals. I'm not sure. It's, it's a theory. But also, again, the chemicals they put in, my body is more sensitive to everything because I'm clairsentient, right? Because I'm clairsentient, you know, I'm going to pick up all these illnesses from other people. Even if I transmute it out, it's like, regardless, it's still super sensitive, which means everything in my body is going to be super sensitive, like my intestines, my liver, my gallbladder, everything. And yeah, so I can't eat those things. It makes me sad because I like chicken. I miss chicken, yo. Okay. But yeah, if you're somebody with abilities, let me know. Do you guys have any like weird food sensitivities or allergies or what have you? I know I have a lot of sensitivity with the preservatives, whereas the other stuff is like, I have an EpiPen I have to carry around because it gets bad sometimes to where I need to be hospitalized and it's not a fun time. Not a fun time. Number six, I think. I think we're on number six. Social lives. Remember how I said we pick up a lot of energy and when it's more than like three people, uh, I can't function? Well, because of that, I uh, don't have much of a social life. And I noticed as I grew older and older, the friends I had, I kept getting distance from. Some of it was a, a me thing and just like the energies I didn't feel good and just not feeling well from my illnesses, but also like, I don't know. There was just like this avoidance feeling that, you know, I didn't feel right around them. Or I knew when people gave off that energy of, oh, I don't like this person. And, you know, when you're a kid, unless someone says it straight out to you, you might not notice. Some do, but some don't. But for me, mm, I noticed. Number six. I don't even know. Seven. You can pick up energies, believe it or not, from media. You can pick up energies from, let's say you bought something at a yard sale, or you're watching television or a movie. Let's say you're watching a true documentary. Music about, you know, bad things. And feelings and emotions that were put into all of that. Or... Let's say there was a murder in the documentary, like they're talking about it. Or, you know, they're talking about negative entities. You can feel those things, especially if you're clairsentient, depending on your level, of course. And you got to be careful because I feel like, too, when you are able to do it, the ability or you have the capability to connect more on an energetic level, which then builds a bridge 
for other entities to then come back on you. And it's not a good time, trust me. When I was starting out, I thought it would be cool to binge watch all these paranormal documentaries to learn as much as I could. Yeah, I got attacked a lot, a lot, until I learned how to protect myself. Number eight. So this ability is very difficult to shut off and separate foreign energy from yourself. Sometimes I still have issues with that. It depends. And it also depends on your mindset or your state of mind or, you know, ailments that's going on with you. Because if you're preoccupied with other stuff, you're not going to think about separating those energies or transmuting those energies. You're going to get distracted and then you're going to forget because that happens to me. And it sucks. But again, something I got to learn. And I am still learning. Number nine. Here's a fun one. Uh, yeah, you can accidentally create, manifest, and or attract negative entities or attachments or hauntings and energy vampires. Energy vampires love people that are empathic and clairsentient. And people that are clairsentient are typically empathic. So you got to watch. You got to watch that. Number 10, knowing when people don't like you or talking behind your back and when it's really strong, like let's say they're pissed off at you, right? You're going to feel it because that's happened to me. So I played team sports as a kid. I had a great team. But of course, when you get to high school, girls get catty. People have their cliques and so on and so forth. And you just feel the dissonance between yourself and other people like you don't fit in. That was me. I felt like I didn't fit in. And it also felt like other people were talking trash. And I knew when they were putting out that negative energy. And uh, yeah, it just made me isolate myself even more. Plus the whole chronic illness thing. Again, yeah, it, that also separates you from everybody. And when you're in that mindset of, oh my God, they don't like me. Or they're talking crap and it makes you feel like crap and it makes you sicker or it can create sickness. And then last one, number 11, people criticize or judge you and are reluctant to accept you. Now this is for any of the abilities really, but I added it in because I feel like that's something that many of us experience. People will be like, oh, well, how do you know you're not getting your abilities from an evil place? How do you know it's not from the devil? Like, you don't know. It's like, yes, I do. Now, people that lack a discernment, perhaps. Perhaps. But I know. I know myself and I know where I get my abilities from. Or they'll be like, you're crazy. And they'll gaslight you. And they'll just be like, I think you need some help. Just because they don't believe or they're part of some other religion that it goes against or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, those are the 11 struggles that I deal with as a psychic medium with clairsentience as the strongest ability. So guys, let me know what you think. Leave your questions, comments, concerns down below. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, I mean... You're probably coming back anyway, so you might as well just hit the button and hit the notification bell too. But anyway, thank you guys so much for your love and support, and I will hope to see you again soon or tomorrow, tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. If you like this video, I highly recommend you go watch the video I did on clairsentience so you get a better understanding of what that ability is and how it works.